right. Uh, I'm, <clears throat> so my experience on Lincoln, hmm. Well, I have a few actually. Troubled, uh, let me see, depressing, uh, <clears throat> well, let me see, soul crushing, uh, naturally unfair, biased, as well as, obviously there were a few good moments, so, so I'd say that, uh, but the one word, that's all I can really think of at the moment. So one main word, give me one main word. Main word, uh, <clears throat> Definitely uh, troubled, for sure. Definitely. Lincoln is the only high school I, I've, I've attended, so I can't really speak much. But from a hackathon I went to recently uh, from other schools as well, I can definitely see the gap in terms of the stuff we've learned here and the stuff we've learned there in terms of mathematics and programming. Whereas we're doing Java now, uh, which is a mid-level language in terms of programming. Other kids have already done that in grade 10 and have, you know, further improved their skill. And I guess it is a bit interesting to see, you know, schools like John Fraser or St. Port, I think that's what it's called, Port Credit, who had, you know, these amazing, you know, programs affect their ability to program and, you know, make all these cool things. And we were just there like, oh, cool, <laughs> we can like program like a little GUI and that was and it didn't even work, so. I'm not gonna be saying this based on my opinion or based on something that I'm biased about or based on anything that hatred or anything that I have towards anyone. I'm saying this based on straight facts. Now, before I earned my two credits for co-op, I told Mr. Ferguson and Mrs. Daniels, Ms. Daniels is a guidance counselor, she's amazing, I love her. She's the best um, counselor that I've had over my four years at Lincoln. They promised me that I'm going to be having my co-op placement at Lincoln, be doing it inside the school with my fellow students and peers. After that, there was a systematic error. So they call me into the office and they tell me that um, they're going to be changing my placement and they're going to be sending me to a law firm. And I declined because I rightfully signed a contract. I signed it, Mr. Ferguson, that represents the school, signed it. And obviously, Mrs. Wenzel, the co-op teacher, signed it. So I told them that it was a mistake on their hand and therefore I'm going to be staying at the school no matter what the consequences are because it's their fault, it's their mistake and they should own up to their own actions. And what they said, no. They told me straight up no, they abused their power. They called into the, they called, Mrs. S called the principal into the office and the principal came in and she said, I am the boss, I am the principal and you're going to do what I tell you to do. Some are very bad, some are very poor. If this school really wanted to have students care and actually like school, they should have some better programs. Like, I came to the school expecting to be a football team. I expected to be able to play on the football team. I come to the school in grade nine, and it turns out they have no football team, they cut it. A lot of stuff has gone from awesome to very, very bad at the school. They need a lot of help bringing the extracurricular stuff back to the school and back to the students. I play for the baseball team now, and I'm not trying to trash the school and all that, but we have barely any equipment. We have barely any gloves to be able to practice with our new players. We have no baseball bats to use at games. We need more resources. Every school has stuff for their students, for their teams. It's different. I would love to see this school actually have stuff that compares to other schools, because this school is going down lower and lower every year. Like, this school is dropping and dropping fast. Uh, you know, rather than, you know, I know there's some teachers that, who don't care really about the students, who just care about being a good employee and getting to the top. And there's some teachers who care about the students, who do a lot for the students, and they're not getting the recognition that they deserve so that's also one of the things I just don't like. And then there's some teachers, you know, it's like, rather than telling a kid and cursing him for, well, not cursing, well, push them, like saying, oh, you're not coming to class. Oh, why? Why aren't you coming to class? Or oh, blah, blah, you know, you know, like, you know, whatever, punishing them for not coming to class. How about you talk to them, get the reason why they're skipping class, and try to make it more interesting. Maybe, it's, you know, stop just saying, oh, 
you don't come to class, you know, you know, you're a bad student or whatever. I hate that. I feel like he has to talk to students. There's reasons why people don't come to class because sometimes the class is too boring and you got you to gotta make your class fun. You want students to come to class, make it fun. Make the class fun, make it engaging and stuff. And there's some students that it's not only the teachers, it's the students too. A lot of them just don't care and they're on their phone. And when the teacher does try, a lot of them just stay on their phone and just don't care about what the teacher's saying. A lot, yeah, so that's what sometimes I... I want, that's the stuff I want to say, yeah, we can improve on, yeah.